Hello, fifth graders. We will continue to look at a thirds number line. Uh, I've not bothered with uh, the negative thirds. We're not going to work with negative numbers for a, quite a while. I just wanted to make you aware that there are such things as negative halves, negative thirds, negative fourths, and so on, and they uh, are situated on the number line in a very orderly way. Uh, one of my big messages is that math you should regard it as simple. It builds on simple ideas. It's important to thoroughly learn all of the definitions and assumptions that we're going to make so that this journey will be easy from step to step. And uh, speaking of easy, how about um, adding a bunch of ones together? I don't know if you ever thought of it this way before, but Counting is simply a matter of you know, counting with the natural numbers the way we all learn when we're very young. It's nothing more than adding one and adding one again and adding one again. One plus one plus one plus one. This was four ones, this four. So let's do that. <laughs> Three thirds plus Three thirds plus three thirds plus three thirds. When I was making the previous video entitled Definition of Fraction, uh, I, of course, knew that some things were going on that I had to wait because we can't do everything at once. And maybe you noticed some things that were going on. Let's look at the whole numbers on this third number, thirds number line. Let's look at the one. This is the whole number one here, and it's the third third. The whole number two is the sixth third, or six thirds. The whole number three is nine thirds. The whole number four is 12 thirds. Are you noticing a pattern? You should be noticing a pattern. The whole number five is 15 thirds. 6 is 18 thirds and 7 is 21 thirds. And if you've identified a certain pattern in, in those whole numbers when they are represented as thirds, you should realize that that pattern can continue forever. Well, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is, of course, 4. It is clear on the number line. Last time, I made note of the fact that the whole number 1 is 3 thirds just as a matter of counting the thirds, starting at zero and then counting the first third, the second third, the third third, you're right on top of one. So they are equal. Three thirds is one. So we can think of what I just wrote here as one plus one plus one plus one or four. If we add three thirds plus three thirds plus three thirds plus three thirds, of course, the answer has to be four. But in addition to being four, what is it in terms of fraction addition? The way I, I taught you last time. Well, let, let's actually sort of go through the movement on the number line. If we start at three thirds and add another three thirds, one, two, three, now we're at two. And then we add another three thirds, one, two, three thirds, now we're at three. And we add another three thirds, one, two, three, and we're at four. It's 12 thirds, right? Three-thirds plus three-thirds plus three-thirds plus three-thirds is 12 thirds. Notice, when we're adding fractions, we never add the denominator. Never. Twelve thirds. And of course, the twelve thirds, the twelve, comes from three plus three plus three plus three is twelve. Now, you should also be comfortable with the fact that 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 4 times 3. So when you're adding those um, thirds together to get 12 thirds, which is, of course, 4, notice on the number line, the whole number 4 is 12 thirds. We could also have thought of this as 3 times 4 thirds, or uh, actually... Um, I'd like to think of it as four times three. Multiplication is commutative, but I like to think of adding 
four threes together as four times three. Now that four times three is 12. Notice the raised dot. The raised dot means multiplication. Four times three is 12. 12 thirds is four, according to the number line. And we're going to learn something a little later. I'm going to introduce you to a concept, concept of canceling. When numbers are multiplied together, top and bottom, when you have the same number on the top and bottom of a fraction, and that number is being multiplied by something else in the numerator or multiplied by something else in the de denominator, we can do what's called cancel common factors, cancel the same number top and bottom. Those threes can be canceled because there's one on the top, one on the bottom, and this three is being multiplied by four. And if you're wondering, well, what's the three multiplied by? And the, and the denominator would be one. We don't really need that there. Four over one is the same as four. There, there's the four again. Now, this, this idea of canceling, if, if this seems strange to you, don't worry about it because that's going to come, uh, that's going to be part of a very important lesson that comes up later on. All right? Um, Adding thirds is nothing more than movement on the number line. Um, this notion that three thirds is one is extremely important. And the fact that six thirds is two, I asked you to think about that pattern before. Well, what if we think of that fraction as a division? Can we read a fraction as a division. Can we read this three-thirds as three divided by three? And this six-thirds as six divided by three, which is two. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. Nine divided by three is three. Twelve divided by three is four, and so on. That's the pattern that you might have noticed. And it works. It's true. This um, thing that we call a fraction it's got the fraction bar and the numerator and the denominator, as we talked about in the previous video. It can also be understood as a division when you read it from top to bottom. Now, there's a whole lot more that we're going to do with that. And it might seem a little strange at the beginning, but this is just the nature of math. Sometimes you have to think of the same thing in two different ways. A fraction is also a division that can be read from top to bottom. In fact, that's going to be the preferred way for us to write a division. This, this symbol that we're used to from the lower grades, that one there, uh, we're not going to use that as much. We're going to, uh, as time goes on, write divisions as fractions because they are. Okay. Well, you may be aware you're certainly aware, even if you don't know the name of it, you're certain, certainly aware of something that is commonly called a mixed number. If you ask a, a very young person, how old are you? That student might answer, I'm two and a half. That very young person is developing number sense. That person knows that he or she has already had their second birthday and they have not yet had their third birthday. So they're between two and three. Now, technically, as you probably know, you should know, you're only two and a half for, for an instant, six months after your second birthday. To a very young person who's about, you know, between two and three years old, everything between two and three is two and a half. <laughs> But of course, you know that's not true. We're going to explore why that's not true. If, if the uh, young person had their second birthday the, yesterday, the day before, they're certainly not two and a half. And if their third birthday is tomorrow, they're not two and a half either. And, you know, learning the definition of fraction, how fractions work, would allow us to be more accurate about that person's age. Um, but the idea that there are numbers between the whole numbers, even that very young person saying two and a half, even if it's not very accurate, still indicates knowledge that there are numbers between the whole numbers. And 
we frequently refer to them in a way like that, two and a half, five and nine tenths, six and one third, six and two thirds, seven and five eighths. Numbers like that are known as mixed numbers because they're a mixture of a whole number and a fraction. We're going to explore this notion of the mixed number a little bit in this video. This is the purpose here. But to explore this notion of the mixed number, you have to have some understanding of the fraction addition. But the fraction addition is easy. It's In this case, with a thirds number line, it's just moving along uh, the, 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 and counting up the thirds. So let's look at an example. In the previous video on the definition of fraction, we got into the notion of addition a little bit. And we did this one. Four-thirds plus seven-thirds is eleven-thirds. Let, let, let's, let's do this. Let's uh, repeat this sentence a couple of times. When we're adding or subtracting fractions, we never add or subtract the denominator. Never. Sometimes I have students repeat that in the classroom. Maybe we'll do that just for fun. But you know it now. Uh, Four-thirds plus seven-thirds is not eleven-sixths. We never add that denominator. Even when we have different denominators in the, in the fractions, when we learn how to add those, we're not going to be adding denominators. We never do that. And, of course, we're going to learn how to subtract fractions. It's just a matter of moving to the left on the number line. You know, um, one, if you know how to add fractions, uh, then it's, a, it's an easy adjustment to subtraction. But whether it's addition or subtraction, you're never going to add or subtract the denominator. So don't forget that. Very important. And, you know, I always emphasize the why. Well, adding thirds is movement along the thirds number line. So in, in this case, there's no reason it would be wrong to bring in sixths. This doesn't make any sense. Here's the four thirds, and we count on or add on, moving to the right because we're adding. We count seven more thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, and we end up at 11. And by the way, um, why don't I just make this? Should be an obvious point. Four thirds plus seven thirds is four plus seven over three. One of the things that I try to get across to you as much as possible is that math builds on what comes before. When we're working with fractions, once we define the fraction and we understand what it's all about, the calculations that we have to make are just the same calculations that we learned to do when we were much younger. We know that four plus seven is 11. So four thirds plus seven thirds is four plus seven over three, four, 11 thirds. And this can be generalized, by the way. Let's, let's say the denominator of, uh, of our fraction is A, the letter A standing for, in this case, any, any whole number, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Let's say we have four over A, plus 7 over a. Now, within this problem, this a and this a have to be the same number. When we're using letters to represent general situations, that's the understanding. If this here were a b, then we cannot assume that these are the same number. And they probably are not a and b. Um, but when they're both a, they're the same number. So, you see, this is a generality. 4 over a plus 7 over a is 11 over a. So let me, let me just make that a little bit more concrete if this seems a little, a little too um, abstract. It is abstract, but increasing abstraction, looking at things in general terms, and we use letters for that. Don't be intimidated by the letters. That's another thing to not be intimidated by. They will make perfect sense as we, as we go forward and use more and more letters in math. Let's just say A equals 13. Pick that number at random, a whole number. So we would have 4 over 13 
plus 7 over 13, so it would be 11 over 13. This here tells us generally how the addition of uh, two fractions works when the denominator is the same. It's very easy to keep that denominator and just add the numerators. Okay. Now, this problem, 4 thirds plus 7 thirds equaling 11 thirds, we did that uh, in the previous video, and um, I figured why not use the same one. But there's another way to represent this answer. This is a totally correct answer to 4 thirds plus 7 thirds equals 11 thirds. But sometimes it's, it's helpful to express a, a number like 11 thirds in a different way to understand better where it is on the number line. How much is it? What is this thing 11 thirds? I'll pause just a bit to erase. And if we look on the number line at this answer 11 thirds, let me indicate this answer to our addition. Our addition of 4 thirds plus 7 thirds being 11 thirds. There it is. Now, I made a point so far of, of emphasizing that 11 thirds is the 11th third to the right of zero. That's how all fraction number lines work. That's what 11 thirds means. The 11th third to the right of zero, we just count them, right? Keeping in mind, of course, the whole numbers are also thirds, right? The number one is three thirds, the number two is six thirds, and so on. Uh, I can't emphasize enough uh, how important that is. But w we can say that 11 thirds is the 11 third to the right of zero. That's certainly true. That's the definition of 11 thirds. But can we see it in a different way? Well, here's the whole number three, and here's the whole number four. 11 thirds is certainly between three and four. It's greater than three and less than four. And, you know, think back to that two and a half year old person we were talking about before. Um, if somebody, somebody's age were 11 thirds years, they're not three and a half. They're closer to four than they are to three, right? This 11 thirds here, this point is closer to four than it is to three. But it's not four, so we cannot say that it's four plus something, but we can say that it's three plus something. This 11 thirds is the whole number three plus, I'll ask you, how many more thirds? Here's three, which by the way is nine thirds, and here's 11 thirds. How many thirds past three is 11 thirds. Well, two thirds, right? It's two thirds past three. Here is a big topic of fifth grade math. This kind of a fraction here, 11 thirds, um, the numerator is greater than the denominator. It's what's known as an improper fraction. If the numerator and denominator are the same number, like three thirds, or if the numerator is bigger, we call that kind of fraction improper. And then this number here, three and two thirds, we say the word and, we don't write a plus sign in here. For simplicity, we just agree. When we see something like this, it means three, the whole number three plus two more thirds. 11 thirds is clearly two thirds more than three. It's three plus two thirds, which is exactly what this mixed number mixture of whole number and fraction. That's what it means. That's all it means. It's very simple. I want to give you a way to think about this truth here, 11 thirds equaling 3 and 2 thirds. Uh, encourage you to start approaching it abstractly. And to do this, you're going to have to have a firm understanding of the multiplication facts that you learned in third grade and hopefully have mastered by now. All of the single digit multiplication facts from zero times zero, one times one, one times four, two times three, five times six, all the way up to nine times nine. 
you need to be able to have instant recall about all of those. Middle school math is going to build on those multiplication facts. And um, I, I want you to be able to take 11 thirds. And initially, if you have to think about the number line or even actually write one out for yourself, that's fine. But you have to move beyond that fairly soon and, and, and develop that level of abstraction where you can recognize this. We got to the 11 thirds earlier by adding 4 thirds and 7 thirds. But let's try to think of that 11 thirds in a different way as two fractions added together, but not 4 thirds plus 7 thirds. Let's think of it this way. 9 thirds plus 2 thirds. Now, isn't, isn't that a true statement? Isn't 11 thirds equal to 9 thirds plus 2 thirds? Certainly is, right? But why is this more helpful? Why is it more helpful to think of the 11 thirds as 9 thirds plus 2 thirds? Well, it's because 9 thirds is 3, right? And how do you know that abstractly? Well, concretely, you can know that 3 is 9 thirds by just looking at the number line. Remember before I said you can think of the fraction as a division, however, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And so this fraction right here, 9 thirds, is the whole number 3, plus 2 thirds. So let me write this, 3 plus 2 thirds. And uh, this is sort of a, a funny little uh, question that I like to ask middle school students sometimes. I like to ask them, what's 3 plus 2 thirds? <laughs> and the answer is, three and two thirds. It simply becomes this mixed number. Uh, we, when, we, when we think of, when we write, when we say three and two thirds, it's understood that there's a plus sign between those two numbers, between the whole number three and the, and the two thirds. And th that's all that three and two thirds is. Go to the whole number three and then go two more thirds past, past three. That's clearly where the 11 thirds is. Two thirds past three. So this 11 thirds, is also three and two thirds. Do you want to test your uh, ability right now to think abstractly? Can we go, well, we'll do maybe another question or two about thirds and then maybe go to another uh, kind of fraction with a different denominator, higher than three. Let's try. So let's take a look at these three fractions. They are improper fractions because the numerator is greater than the denominator. And, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I, I neglected to, to say this in that first video about the definition of fraction. When I teach fractions to fifth graders, from the very beginning, I, I teach that fractions are not just parts of one, okay? Um, when, when we probably, as very young people, think about fractions, we're thinking of something that's less than one. You know, I ha I, I'm going to eat half of this cake. <laughs> Hopefully it's a small cake. Because you shouldn't eat half a cake in one sitting, probably. Or, um, how much of the cake is left? Some people have eaten some of the cake. How much of it is left? Well, about one-fourth is less uh, is left, or maybe uh, three-eighths of the cake is left. Uh, in our everyday lives, fractions that are less than one ki kind of dominate. And then, of course, if there's a big party, you got a bunch of cakes, maybe after uh, the party's over, maybe you can say, hey, there are three-and-a-half cakes left, or maybe there are three-and-two-thirds cakes left, you could estimate. Um, but um, it, it, it's important to realize that once we define what a fraction is, what the halves are, what the thirds are, the fourths, the fifths, and so on, those fraction number lines go on forever. There are fractions greater than one. There are fractions greater than two, fractions greater than three, and so on. All of these fractions are, we immediately recognize are greater than one. 
And uh, that's what we mean by an improper fraction. If a fraction is one, like three-thirds or four-fourths or fifth-fifths, or greater than one, we call it improper. And we frequently want to convert that improper fraction to either a whole number or a mixed number. Sometimes a fraction that is presented to you like, like one of these, sometimes it results in being a whole number. Other times it'll be what we call a mixed number. Well, let's think about 26 thirds for a moment. It's actually not on that number line up there because the number line only goes to about seven. We'll pass seven. Do you recognize, do you realize, have you tried to develop that abstraction that 26 thirds is more than eight? Why is 26 thirds more than eight? Because 24 thirds is eight, right? Think of this 26 thirds as 24 thirds plus two thirds. That is certainly true, right? 24 thirds plus two thirds is 26 thirds. Why did I choose to break apart the 26 thirds in that way? Because I know my three times table. I know that 24 divided by three is eight. So 26 thirds is eight plus two thirds. And we agree to write eight plus two thirds simply like that as what we call a mixed number. 26 thirds is the 26th third past zero. But it's also the second third past eight. That's all there is to it. How about this one? Do you want to start to get into the habit of seeing these fractions as divisions? Let's do that. Um, probably need to spend a little more time on the why of that. It's, it's maybe a little bit early to introduce that, that concept, but it'll work. That's another way of writing or expressing 60 divided by 3. This is equal to 20. 60 thirds is the whole number 20. If we were to continue to think abstractly, think about the multiplication facts for 3. Uh, to go back to that cancellation thing, which again, we aren't officially there with that cancellation. But 60 can be thought of as 20 times 3. 20 times 3 over 3. And because these two are multiplied, we can cancel the 3s. And the, the only thing left on the bottom is 1. 20 over 1 is 20. 60 thirds is 20. In, in terms of the number line, just think 3 thirds plus 3 thirds plus 3 thirds plus 3 thirds. We're adding 1 each time there. So if we add 20 of those 3 thirds, 3 thirds is, right? 3 thirds plus 3 thirds plus 3 thirds, dot, dot, dot. And there are going to be 20 of them. Well, each of those 3 thirds is 1. So we're adding 20 ones together, which, of course, is 20. But what would the numerator do? Right? The denominator is going to be 3. We never add the denom denominators. So if, if, just imagine you're adding 20 3 thirds. And so you're going to add the numerators 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And there are going to be 20 of them. Well, you don't have to do that addition. Adding 20 threes together is 20 times 3, or 60. 60 thirds is 20 times 3 over 3, uh, it's 20 3 thirds is added together. And each 3 thirds is 1, so it's 20. <laughs> if this seems a little strange right now, stick with it. It will not be strange if you pay attention in class, do the practice problems, homework problems, quiz questions, and if you get one wrong on a quiz, you look at my corrections immediately and learn from those mistakes and move on. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Do the work. Fix mistakes. Let me know when you're having trouble with something, and um, it'll all come together. It'll be a wonderful journey. Well, 
we could not show 26 thirds on this number line that only goes about to seven. And we certainly couldn't show 60 thirds, which goes to 20. <laughs> on this number line that I, thirds number line that I drew up here. That is, now this one, this, this 60 thirds is way past uh, the, the end uh, here. And, and 121 thirds, of course, even uh, is even further down the line. Can, can you build on the previous one? Can you build on 60 thirds being 20? And think about 121 thirds, what that might be? Well, is it, can we think of it like this? 60 thirds plus 60 thirds plus one third? How about that? Is 60 thirds plus 60 thirds plus one third equal to 121 thirds? Of course. 60 plus 60 is 120 plus 1 is 121. Now we already know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, we already know that, 20 th uh, uh, that 60 thirds is 20. So down here we have 20 plus 20 plus 1 third. 20 plus 20 is 40, and 40 plus a third. That's that easy question again. The easiest question I will ask you in middle school math is something like, what is 40 plus 1 third? It's 40 and one third. You just write it as a mixed number. Now, is there a slightly quicker way to get to the 40 and one third? Well, yes, there is. You could have recognized right from the start that we can think of 121 thirds as 120 thirds plus one third. And again, that's obviously equal to 121 thirds. Do you recognize that 120 thirds is what? What is 120 thirds or 120 divided by three? It's 40, right? Those multiplication facts are crucial. Hopefully you've mastered them. And if you haven't, work on it. The mastery of those ASAP as soon as possible because uh, any number of things we're gonna do in fifth grade and beyond depend on your knowledge of those single digit multiplication facts that you learned in third and maybe mastered in fourth. Get them done now if you need to, all right? So we have talked about in this video, which I'm gonna close up now, we have talked about taking what is known as an improper fraction and rewriting it, expressing it as a so-called mixed number. Now, we're also gonna go in the reverse direction we're going to take mixed numbers and express them as improper fractions. If you understand how one of them works, you should be easily able to understand how it works in the opposite direction. So we'll close off for now, fifth graders, and we will continue our journey throughout fifth grade. Sometimes when I'm talking about fifth grade math, I'll say something like, if I had to choose one word to describe fifth grade math, it would be fractions. Now we'll do more. We'll do a little geometry. We'll do a little algebra actually. And um, we'll actually do a little review of some whole number operations. You may have already seen or you will see soon a video that I've prepared about whole number multiplication. We'll review this idea of division and long division review the long division process and master that a little bit more. But the number one focus of fifth grade math is fractions and we've begun that journey. Please stick with it and let me know if you have any trouble as soon as possible. Take care fifth graders, new fifth graders and I'll see you soon.